Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving some Project Euler problems. So this is problem number three. Uh, problem number three, basically we're told that what we want to do is we want to find the prime factors of this large number, and we wanna know what the largest prime factor of the number is. Now, if you are familiar with how loop looping generally works, um, you'll notice that this number is not the kind of number that you want to loop up to. It's very big. I think you could potentially have it figure out the answer to this, um, but you don't want to just straight loop this many times. That's a lot of times. That would take a long time. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to overdo my solution. I'm going to not brute force per se. It's kind of a brute force. It's not very clever, but we'll see. I'll show you what I'm going to do and it'll make sense to you. Um, so basically, let's imagine we have a number. Let's say we have, I don't know, what's two times two times three times five. That would be 15 times two would be 30 times two would be 60. Okay, so let's say we have 60. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to reduce this number down. And I'm gonna start with two. So I'm gonna say, does two divide into 60? And the answer is yes. So since it does, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up a map I'm overdoing it on this problem, if I'm being entirely honest with you. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, it did. So track it once, make a tick mark, and divide it out. So that gives us back 30. So then I'm going to keep asking, okay, does, does 2 go into 30? And the answer is yes. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to divide it out again. I'll make another tick mark. And that gives back 15. And then I'm going to ask, does 2 go into 15? So you so notice the, the key here is I'm not iterating 60 times. I'm iterating, and as I'm iterating, if I'm finding factors, I'm reducing the number down. So of course, if this number were prime, um, which is not, because it's asking for the largest prime factor, um, which I guess it still could be prime. It could be the only prime factor. Um, if it were prime, I'd have to loop this many times. So my solution wouldn't necessarily be great at detecting a prime that big, but it's okay at figuring out what the prime factors are. So does two go into 15? The answer is no. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to three. So we're gonna try, does three go into 15? And the answer is yes here. So three goes into 15 at least once. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide out three, which will give five. Five, three does not go into, five, five does go into five. So it's gonna end up looking like, sorry, I'm jumping a little bit, but basically that's the pattern. We're gonna start with two and then we're gonna try three. And then since we've already done two, we never need to check an even again. So we can jump to five. Then later, if we hadn't reduced it all the way down, we can jump to seven. But in the end, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up with a one because we fully divided all of the factors out of the number. And we're gonna end up with a map mapping a prime factor to the number of times um, it divides the number. The number of times it divides. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get to coding this and I'm gonna overdo it. And notice in this particular problem, um, the actual answer is only four digits. I masked all but the last digit just because I wanted to decrease the search space. Um, if you were trying to just randomly brute force answers. Because if you were trying to just brute force answers out and I gave you all but these two, you'd only have to guess, um, you know, you'd, you'd only have 100 guesses here, zero through 99. But anyways, that's near the over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use um, data.math strict. I'm gonna use a map to represent this answer, to represent uh, prime factor mapped the number of times it divides. So again, I'm overdoing it. We're looking just for the max, but I'm kind of taking it too far, which is okay, it's fun. So basically what we're doing is prime factors. We're writing a generic, what are the prime factors? And we're taking in an int and we're returning back a map from a prime factor to the number of times it occurs. And what are we gonna do here? Well, basically we've got a couple of different pieces that we've gotta write. We've gotta write something that knows how to do this factorization repeatedly. So something that can do, for example, this bit where it's just 
factoring out two until it can't factor out two anymore, and then it's returning back the new value, which would be 15, and it's returning back two to indicate that two divided in twice. I'm gonna call that factor out, so let's go ahead and start with the let in, which is usually a pretty good place to start. So what is our new value? Our new value and the number of times we have two being factored out. So factor out two from value. So we're gonna start with two because it's kind of a special case because we, well, like I said, we're gonna do two and then we're never gonna look for another even number again. So we kind of have to do a little bit different of a recursion to handle all the odds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say m dot from list and that's gonna be of two n. And I'm actually gonna introduce a new operator here which is gonna be a cons operator, but it's gonna be a conditional cons. Because the idea is basically if, if we're given, for example, three, we would just wanna return back three, one as our mapping. But if we were trying to do two on this, this would return back two. Well, when we tried to take two, um, it wouldn't modify our value that we're dividing out of, but it would return back zero. And I don't really wanna pollute my map with a bunch of zeros. So basically what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce a new cons operator that if it sees some number and then zero trying to be cons onto others, basically it's just gonna return back others. Otherwise, in other words, we're not gonna track zeros in our map just cause it'll get kind of full with nonsense if we do. So that's what this little operator here will do once we've implemented it. And then what we're doing is we're introducing another part, factor until one from three, our new value. So basically what that's gonna do is that's going to do this next part here. So everything beyond two, we're just gonna keep trying um, odd factors. So it's gonna try three, it's gonna try five, it's gonna try seven, it's gonna try nine. And it's just gonna keep doing this until the actual value you're factoring becomes one. So let's start with the easy parts first. Let's start with that new little cons operator. And basically the type for this thing's a little wacky, but we need num a, we need eek a as constraints. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in some b and some a as a pair. And then we're gonna take in a list of b and a. That's the thing we're consing onto. And we're gonna be returning a list of b and a. All right, so what does this look like actually? Well, if we have anything followed by a zero and we have other things after it, we're just gonna return those other things. If we have an A and a B, which is anything else, of course, that's just gonna be the A and the B constant to the rest. So in other words, if we have an actual value to cons that's non-zero, we're gonna cons it on, okay? So let's go ahead and let's write our factor out. And factor out is gonna take a divisor. It's gonna take a value. And then if that value is divisible by the divisor, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, basically we're gonna recurse. So our new value and the number of times we found it's divisible so far is gonna be the factoring out, oops, of divisor from V divided by divisor. So this is our reduction step. This is saying we found that it's divisible, so we're gonna divide it out once and then we're gonna keep trying. And then basically our actual answer is just gonna be whatever the answer of the recursion was, plus one on the number of times we actually found that factor. So there's our factor out piece. And it's actually not too bad. It feels like a lot of code, but it's really just a recursion. So let's do our factor until one. So factor until one is gonna say, if you give me one, I have nothing interesting to tell you. But then we're gonna say factor until one, given an odd factor and a value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let our V prime n equal factor out, and this is actually gonna look a lot like what's up here. So we're gonna factor out our odd divisor. 
from B. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to just use our special cons operator. So this really looks a ton like what's above. And then we're just going to continue to factor until one, our odd factor plus two, because again, we're trying three and then we're trying five and then we're trying seven with V prime. So I think that's what we're looking for here. This thing will give back our actual, it'll give back enough to be able to calculate our answer. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save off our puzzle value. So our puzzle input is this thing right here. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to do a good old fashioned case statement. And with maps, you can just say look up max, which will find the max value in a map, which is exactly what we're looking for. So of the prime factors of the puzzle. And if we end up finding a prime factor, because look up max returns an optional. What we're gonna do is we're going to print all but the last digit of the factor. Again, just because I don't wanna give away actual answers themselves here. And otherwise, we're going to print, oops, didn't find a factor. Because basically, max will only return nothing if the map itself is empty. So that's the idea, that's what we're looking to do. Let's go ahead and let's give this a run and see how we did. Oh, and we get an error in factor out. I must have missed a case. So let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, I missed a case in factor out because the idea is if we get anything else, and look at that, Emacs actually told me I was missing a case. So that's kind of nice. Should have been paying attention. <laughs> So factoring out anything when it's not divisible, so this would be the catch-all case, would be that value, but with zero. This didn't actually factor out any times. All right, back to our shell. Let's run it once more. And we get a four-digit number that ends in seven, so that looks, uh, that looks about right. 